this song memorizes for me pain and growth. I had a woman, she tried to sue me for rape. My father died. A guy totally financially destroyed me. I had experience with gay people and these gay people tried to, you know, they tried to, how do you say that? Do, like, force me to do stuff or otherwise they will tell. No, I'm not afraid of this whole shit. You see guys, if you go through the deepest of the deepest, then, and you survive, then you can fuck life, baby. You can fuck life and you have a boner. Love it. Welcome to Synchronicity. That was sounded like it was going to be like a big welcome, but it wasn't. It was quick. I did it fast. How you doing? How's reality? How's your sector of reality treating you this time? We can't even speak about the world as though it's just some out there thing anymore that like everyone's going through the same shit. I mean, there are clearly waves in the collective that are weaving their way through what's going on. Hold on. I need to take a sip of the, I think I think it's what is their drink. Hold on. I'm drinking lean. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Have you ever had lean, by the way? I had it one time. You know what lean is? It's basically like codeine syrup and like Sprite or whatever. It's weird. Time moves weird on codeine. You want to know why all these rappers are in the flow? You just go into codeine world. You just things move a little bit different there. This is not advice. Don't. I did it one time. It's you know opioids. Not totally my thing. Anyway, this uh, this is how we're starting this episode. I guess. How's the reality for you? How's it been? Has it been nice? Has it been easy? Has it been calm? Not mine. Mine's been pretty fucking nuts. Mercury retrograde. I don't think we fully went into it last time. I mean, before I was like, yeah, you know, Mercury retrograde. This one was just like anything that could have gone wrong logistically, anything chose to go wrong. Is that because I believe in Mercury retrograde or there happens to be some real influence from external reality? probably a little bit of both but let's just say it's because of my belief in it but i don't know this one fucking got me and you know when you find yourself in those situations sometimes you want to be like you know what no i don't believe in mercury retrograde this isn't a thing this can't be happening to me i control my reality it doesn't really work sometimes what's up with that we'll be talking about those types of questions in this episode uh guys before we get started i wanted to mention clubhouse i nicole thank you very much for helping me out on my inaugural uh, clubhouse thing today if you're not on clubhouse it's basically an audio app where you can listen and participate in conversations it's a cool thing i think we'll probably be doing that on the patreon regularly but we'll also do some just open to people who follow on clubhouse and do that type of stuff just a nice way to interact and have a conversation i feel like a lot of media is moving towards that as well there's nothing wrong with someone having a platform and being like this is what i'm gonna say god knows I do that. But there's also something to be said, like actually interacting with people. It's part of the reason I do readings and we have the Patreon where we can have conversations. We had a smoke session last night. Uh, you know, we, I do these things because it's nice to actually interact with people and not just pretend, oh, I could, I listen to me. I got important stuff to tell you. Everyone knows this stuff. That's basically what we're coming to the conclusion to. When I say we, that's the royal we. Who knows what that means? Just that it, it's always you. Anyone who says that there's some other thing influencing you is selling you a false story, whether knowingly or not, that's, we all kind of like intuitively get that. That doesn't mean we're immune from taking on people's beliefs and uh, 
fears and hopes and anxieties and wishes and all that stuff. It's just part of the game. One thing that I've been really resonating with lately is this idea that we come here primarily because it's a fun experience. And is fun a subjective term? Maybe your fun is different than my fun, but the experience of having fun, you know, an exciting, exhilarating, enjoyable experience seems to be a large function of what we're doing here. And if you can remember that, some people think it's like a soul contract that you sign, like before you're born, you know, you, you have all these things you're going to play out and it's going to be like this and you have to learn these lessons. Sure, totally is that for sure. But also maybe you get to continuously write what that contract is and also like author it a little bit while you're here and if you can remember you probably chose to come to this level of existence this sector of time and space of reality you probably did it for good reasons i it's hard for me to believe that people would come here to torture themselves clearly that's some people's experiences have you felt shitty lately in any period of time, certainly can be like, well, why would I do this? That can even lead to like, what, suicide, suicidal thoughts, depression, being stuck in states. Don't think physical death is, is an escape from that. That's your consciousness. That's your awareness. I think we play through these things until we really get the message that like, oh, maybe my internal state is actually shaping my external reality. Just a little bit. Maybe we can start with just a little bit and then maybe work ourselves up to all of it. Maybe it's doing all of it. But we don't have to go there right away. I've learned throughout the years, sometimes it's appropriate to go full throttle, sometimes it's not. It's just like anything else in life, you know? Sometimes you want to bang the shit. Sometimes you just want to take it slow. Take it real slow. It's different times and places for that. I don't know why I went with the bang the shit out of and take it slow metaphor, but that's what we're going with. So, yeah, I just think ultimately when this is all said and done, meaning you're getting off the wheel of time and space and this type of experience here. I don't think you're going to be looking back and being like, hmm, wow, that was super serious. Whoa. <sighs> wow, glad I didn't fuck that. I'm so, wow, everything was on the line. What a crazy set of circumstances that I felt. What a, it's going to be like, oh, shit, we were doing that? We were supposed to be having fun. Wait, this was a beautiful place where we have the opportunity to realize our own consciousness creates everything we're experiencing? Shit. That's probably, that's probably what it's more like. Just a suspicion. I feel like we're transcending a lot of concepts of death, whether that be a death of a personality, a, a psychic kind of version of yourself or psychic versions of other people or collectively or physically, who knows? Death is still in the air. The sweet smell of death. <laughs> if, you tune, if you tune in to the wrong point in this podcast, wow, I already know I sound pretty much like a lunatic. When you hear stuff like that, it's probably not encouraging if you don't like me. Anyway, keep the positive reviews coming in. We're having a great time. Uh... I've been, I have to mention it because like my mind literally won't let it go. Crypto stuff, guys. Not plugging the Discord, which is fucking amazing. Obviously, I have to. It's good. But have you been paying attention? All right. For those of you who have taken this ride into the crypto world, you may have experienced a little what's known as a dipper rooney. The dipper rooney happened yesterday. It's when you wake up and 20% of your net worth is wiped off. Weirdly, this is something crypto has taught me. I actually feel better on days where things like dip 20, 30% when they correct. We're still in a bull market, by the way. It's totally safe to buy cryptocurrency. Don't worry about it, for real. How does he know what he's talking about? This shit has literally happened like four times before. If you want to look at what's happening in 2021 with crypto, this is my free non-financial advice. Go look at 2017. Parallels are striking. Also, notch one in the time not being real category for crypto this year, the cyclical nature of it. Anyway... We're good, but there was a there was a pretty substantial correction. I start to feel weird when I make money and then I'm like, am I doing enough with it? Do I gotta do more with it? That's when I start to get weird with money. I noticed that for myself. When things drop, I'm like, this is great. This is I know exactly what this is amazing. So you can approach anything in life like that too. Just recognize where your kind of tendencies are in terms of like what pings you or triggers you. And like where you can be like, all right, it's not a big deal even there. I totally got this shit. You're going to win in the end. Does this sound 
overly and nauseatingly <laughs> optimistic, sometimes, sometimes, it, don't worry. It'll self-calibrate. <laughs> It'll self-calibrate internally for you. This is also goes to the point of shadow work. This has been coming up a, a fair amount in my life and just in other readings and a lot of, you know, friends. Shadow work isn't there to fuck your shit up. It's not there because it's some inherently evil part of you. It's something that you just haven't placed your awareness on for long enough or at all to actually understand what it is. It's probably a neglected, scared, frightened. It's like a feral animal that hasn't been looked at in years and has been living off like tree bark. Don't run up on that shit. Shadow will eat you alive. Also, don't deny it. It eventually will come out. That's how it is. So just engage with it lovingly like you would anyone else. Not the judge shadow material as it comes up, whatever that is. Maybe you're an asshole that day. Maybe you're a piece of shit that day. Does that define you as a piece of shit forever? If you stack enough piece of shit days together where you really are just acting like a total piece of shit, yeah, you're probably beginning to define yourself as a piece of shit. But if you try to define yourself as someone who's always doing the best, you're the best. You never make a mistake. You're the best person who's ever lived. That's also not achievable. I also, I would hope at this point listening to me, you recognize I'm not on that path. I fuck up all the time. But I also genuinely believe I'm deserving of amazing things. Why do I believe that? Because at a certain point in time when my ego was sufficiently crushed down, I was like, oh my God, I think everything is just unconditional love. And it was a felt experience. Then proceeded to get my ego crushed more and more and more and more and more until you really learn less. It's like, it's all good. What do you really want? What are you looking for? What are you shaped by? What shapes your perspective? How do you engage with that? What do you want to do? You're either going to illuminate or darken your world by the ideas to which you consent. Does that make sense? Your ideas, what you believe to be true of yourself, the world, those around you, that shapes your world. It feels like, no, the world is out there. It tells me what's going on and then I take it in and then I'm just processing what's going on. No, that's not actually true. It's fun to do that. It's fun to be God and forget your God and then remember your God. That's better than just being God. Then it's just, blah, that's what it is. Just what it is, it's this. There would be no high, no low. Unity is amazing. It feels really good. But if you can't balance it with polarity and duality, you know, you don't come here, that's for sure. I'm sure there, there are realms where duality is just like, no, we don't got time for that shit. It's too much, too much effort. This whole fucking two thing with the infinite spectrum in between. I'd rather just chill in unity. That's fine. You're probably not on earth listening to this podcast or pretty much just engaging with any aspect of society if that's the path for you. You'd be in a cave somewhere at best and probably just not in this dimension is more likely. Your awareness wouldn't be here. Also, you're not trapped here. Like, don't, this isn't like you were like, oh, I'm confined to this. Hmm, it sucks so bad. I'm trapped. Hmm. I mean, come on, girl. It's not white. It's also wasting a precious opportunity to be aware of things that are outside of you. Have a consciousness and awareness that is not bound by a body. Totally. We know that for sure. And still have a body. That's fucking cool. Why do you think so many ghosts are trying to incarnate here? What are ghosts? I don't know. People in betweens? Are we ghosts? Pretty sure we're ghosts, right? We're probably more ghostly. Imagine we're just phasing into other worlds that they think are more real than this one. And like, what are those things that keep coming in and being weird? What is that? And we're like, what are those things? I don't know. Just talking. Just talking. Can you tell I took a little bit of LSD today? Just a scotch. Just the end of a microdose. Can someone confirm that the end of the microdose bottles, is it evenly distributed? How does LSD even work? Can it really just go into all of the water? Does it settle? Someone answer that. I'm not a chemist. <sighs> it's fucking one of those days. Have you realized you're drunk God yet? That's basically what being human is. It's drunk God. You know when you're like, I mean, I don't get drunk all the time, but if you've ever been drunk or intoxicated, you're just like, you don't have your wits about you. You're not entirely sure what's going on. You're doing stuff. You may have a shitload of confidence. You may believe a lot of different things, 
but you're not like totally when you're shit faced, like you're not, I, I didn't say shit faced. I just said drunk. You don't remember fully what you're capable of. You really don't have limits. The whole imaginal techniques, this entire manifestation, whatever narrative you want to believe in, whatever you put stock into, is really just designed to show you that it's you summoning forth states from within yourself that you are then outpicturing. The function of time in some, you know, in a pretty cool way is that we can experiment. We're told we cannot influence future events by imagining them into the future, by feeling them to be true, by holding different conceptions of who we are and people around us. Impossible. Prayer doesn't work, you dummy. But it does if you try it. That's why I get to be this annoying and talk about this shit pretty much every week because it does work. Prove me wrong. Take the challenge. It's the classic Neville Goddard thing, right? You don't have to agree with me. I have no vested interest if anyone agrees about what's going on. But I do know everyone who takes this task honestly and sincerely and uses it lovingly, if they choose to, is going to be like, holy fucking shit, what is this place? Where am I? I thought I was somewhere else. I don't know. I, like I said, I'm also lucky enough to see this come in. I get the influx of communications and seeing how this affects people and their lives. But it started, like, for me, truthfully, like, I had to see it in my life. Truthfully. I'm just literally reading through my Twitter. <laughs> you tell? Again, I have not come prepared at all. Just relaxing. We've been having fun on Twitch. I can tell you that. It's a really good time there. There's music. I got a new synthesizer. I got a new drum machine. I think I'm just going to put a bunch of music out in the next month i'm happy to announce can i finally i think i can finally announce this having another baby having another boy in may that's going on happy to finally announce that send your flowers your bitcoin your congratulations to me <laughs> but really it's an amazing thing i basically i feel like it's my job to reclaim the patriarchy at this point right that's pretty much we have to do that i feel this rise of feminism and women's rights it's gone too far they've had their run i feel like you know a year was enough a year relative to 3000 oppressive patriarchal domination years I feel like that's a fair exchange so pump out those boys but also objectively jessa said this today very sweet of her my kids are fucking adorable it's like you kind of have to do it and you got to balance it out with some of the uglies out there right you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this show is just going to be, by the way, I have a feeling over the next year, it's just going to be a slow descent into <laughs> degeneracy as I give less and less fucks about everything. Because reality is, like, just to be clear, things are going to be weird. They're going to get difficult. You're going to have ebbs but you're most certainly going to have flows. And when you're in flow states, how to maximize that, not in like a, let me extract everything out of this, but just to be like, okay, what is this? How do I stay in a flow even when I'm in an ebb? You're still a wave, even if it's pulling back. You can recycle through. It's not a problem. That's basically what we want to be figuring out, how to do continuously, and then enjoy pretty much every aspect of is that weird to say? Does that sound wrong? It doesn't mean you're happy and thrilled about things that aren't fun. Like, I'm not excited that crypto pulled back for one. By the way, it went back up, but pulled back. I was like, yeah, losing money. I love it. No, that's insane. Be somewhat afraid of that. But the felt experience of it was like, this is fine. This isn't a big deal. Whereas when you're like, oh, man, I need this thing. I got to do it. Have you ever noticed that that's literally applicable to anything in life? I really need this thing. Oh, God, I got to do it. I hope I don't fuck it up. How does that work as a mechanism for getting what you want? Not so good. How does it work when you're like, ah, you know what? I think I want that. Not a big deal. That sounds good to me. Going to do that. That works better. Just in my experience. I don't know. Maybe it works differently for you. You're for totally free to say, hey, you know what? This is wrong. This is incorrect. But this is li this is literally, this is still working. I was in a fucking private jet fucking two weeks ago to the Bahamas. Explain that. Explain that one. 
what am I just privileged? We, I'm a normal person, normal human being, but also kind of God. But so are you. That's the whole point. You can do whatever you want. I know it sounds wrong. I know it feels wrong sometimes too. So start with yourself and just go, you know, every day, I think I'm just fucking getting better and better, healthier and healthier, kinder and better, generous, cool, attractive, funny. Why don't you claim those things for yourself? Is there someone saying you can't do that? Does that rub you the wrong way if you think of yourself like that? Change your conception of who you are and see what happens. It's literally you're compelled to follow through those narratives. It's a higher dimensional reality. Here's what I was going to say. I remembered it. So I haven't said it, I guess, recently because I've been getting enough readings with relationship stuff. Here is, for me and many others, the most effective technique. And it's a fusion of something I read in Tufti the Princess, great Priestess. Did I call her the princess? That explains a lot about my psychology. <laughs> Tufti the Priestess, um, which is a cool reality transurfing book. I don't know so much about the other ones, but this one uh, I love. She was great. Um, and there's a combination of a technique they do there with this like braid and thing. Anyway, and a Neville Goddard technique, which is kind of visualization with self felt sensory details so here's what you do let's say you are looking this doesn't even have to be for relationships or love it can be but it doesn't have to be sometimes i feel stupid for repeating these things because like i've said it probably like you know half dozen times but i guess I, if there's no reason not to it's literally the best thing i've ever found for relationship stuff it's it, eerily insane it'll f potentially fuck your entire world up when you see what happens but totally amazing okay this is what you do you find and identify qualities you would want in your ideal partner this could be someone doesn't have to be a specific person you're not picking someone you're picking qualities attractive funny sexy cool kind generous rich could be fucking anything right all you're gonna do is gather those qualities. You can do this at any point. You can make a list if you're a Virgo moon. If you have Virgo tendencies, go make yourself a little list. You don't have to, but you can. Then, as you get into what we'll call, I don't know, we want to call it meditative, relaxed state. Just close your eyes and relax. That's it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to sit a certain way. You don't have to breathe a certain way. Just relax. Ideally, you could pretend that you're going to sleep. That's fine. Whatever you would do before then. Once you do that, you're going to imagine yourself in front of a mirror. This is from within, within your own perspective, right? Your eyes from out, in, like how you see now in the world, what you're seeing, it's going to be the same perspective as that. But you're going to see a mirror in front of you, so you'll see your reflection, right? It can be full body, can be just the face, whatever. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take all of those qualities and you're, excuse me, <laughs> don't drink coffee while recording lesson learned um you're going to see yourself in front of this mirror and you're going to give yourself all of those qualities that's it what do i mean by give yourself all of these qualities what i mean is you're going to see on your face and more importantly feel inside how you would feel how would you feel if you were wealthy how would you feel if you were sexy how would you feel if you were funny hilarious whatever it is truthfully all of the things that you would want from someone else give them to yourself this doesn't mean if you know, you. I, I would caution against doing like height things. Height does work, I've found, but like it's one of those like you cut your arm off, can you grow up back type situations. Yeah, technically you can, but like you really have some heavy lifting to do to like get over the subconscious innate patterns of like people don't grow arms back, bro. But yeah, probably we'll get there. But anyway, don't do too, don't get too weird with it. Start with qualities. I like the meta feelings of the qualities. That's the best thing to do. You're going to imagine this on your face. Each quality can take a second, two seconds. Don't dwell on each one. Just quickly cycle through them. You're going to be looking at the mirror, at yourself in the mirror the entire time. When you're done with the qualities, that's it. You're done. You can throw things in the mirror with you. If you want to put things and tokens and symbols of what your success would be in the mirror and you want to see them, that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. I caution against putting people in the mirror. 
I don't think we're typically wise enough to understand the implications. Our conscious minds believe they want something sometimes, do not understand the specifics of what's involved with that. However, if you're really like really honoring what's best for you and your life, it's probably okay. I don't do it though. Um, or I don't do it to great success. Let's put it like that. I, I, I found that it's not, you're probably creating energetic cords and things that eh, maybe, eh, who knows? Anyway. That's it. That's the whole fucking technique. It sounds stupid. It sounds, I mean, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it sounds just like ridiculous. That's why it works. So let me try to explain the principle behind what's going on here and why this seems to be so effective. In my experience, the longest it'll take for some tangible results to show up when you do that, three to five days. Usually 20, like 24 hours is not uncommon, but three to five days. Really, test it out. Tell me I'm wrong. Every single time someone has come to me for a reading about love or relationship, I ask, have you done the mirror technique? Every single fucking time, they're like, no. I heard about it. I didn't try it. Or no, I don't know what that is. So try it. Save yourself a <laughs> reading. Um, but basically, it works. Here's why. This base level of reality where we are now, let's call this level fucking 3D, right? We're in 3D reality. We know what this is. Everyone's like, all right, 3D reality fourth dimensional we're not going to think of it as time we're going to think of it as just a higher dimensional reality one level up that's our imagination that's when we go inside and view the world from within our own perspective that's a close approximation between the dimension of like infinite imagination divine imagination consciousness creation and where we are here it's like a bridge world right cool love it that's very effective that's very useful. That's also hard for some people to believe. To claim something in your imagination that's going to have an internal and external impact on your world, maybe a tough pill to swallow for some people. Totally cool. I get it. But let's say that you go one step further. You put yourself now in this mirror world. You're in the mirror world now. This now seems like to your conscious, regular, rational mind, like, all right, this is ridiculous. I don't know what this is. It's whatever. I'm not even going to invest enough time to fight this thing because this is just crazy town USA. So the guards, are the and you can even talk about it. I'm talking about it now. The, the sensors are off. The alerts are down. They're like, this is some wacky thing. Whatever. Let it happen. They're, they're drunk over there doing some weird manifestation shit. Who knows? What actually happens is, is that mirror world is also a higher dimensional reality. It's another expansive universe inside of another world. It's another layer of consciousness. So what seems to happen is you slip on past the goalie there. You've now hit a pretty high, expansive level of dimensional reality. This mirror world cascades down into imaginal realm, which cascades down into this realm. So that's why when you find some qualities that you would like from another and give them to yourself, what you're really doing, doing is tuning your vibratory frequency up to a level that everything around that is going to resonate with that frequency and then you'll it'll feel like things are coming into your life you're meeting certain people how this happened what's going on there wow that's so weird what a crazy set of coincidences wow doesn't matter all you did is you literally set kind of your internal tuning i feel like that's what we're doing a lot of the time is like learning how to internally tune ourselves sometimes when you strike a bell or you're really out of tune you pluck a guitar string super out of tune maybe i haven't played it in a while it's really just like sounds not great it's like it's not good it doesn't sound like it's the note it's supposed to be but from there how out of tune it is you know whether to tighten it or loosen it where do you tune it to you're trying to find that signal on the radio whatever it is whatever analogy you want to use that's what we're doing so we put ourselves through a variety of circumstances until we find the right calibration for each situation that we're, we find ourselves in doesn't mean we have to handle it with the exact same way. We're not robots, but it does mean we have the appropriate skills to kind of calibrate and tune ourselves. Does that make sense? I think so. It's been working for me. That's all I can say. I'm pretty sure it works for everyone. I'm not pretty sure. I know it does. At some point, either it's my <laughs> complete misapprehension of every, which I can't discount. Mr. Wrong 5000 over here plenty of times like i don't I'm not batting a thousand for fucking predictions but what it feels like what this reality has rewarded for me more than anything else is understanding that i'm responsible for my own reactions moods 
uh, behaviors, what I allow into my world, what I don't allow into it, what I'm tolerant of, what I'm intolerant of. I'm intolerant of many forms of suffering. I don't push them away childishly. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't want. I try. It doesn't work sometimes. It doesn't work ever. I try sometimes to do it. But I'm like, all right, I, I get it, but I'd rather not. It's like you don't have to eat food you don't like. People are like, well, life sometimes just serves you fucking shit. It's a shit sal- Yes, totally. The circumstances can – can you laugh in the face of being served shit? Can you see the irony and the, and the comedy – and the ridiculousness of someone trying to serve you a plate of shit. If you're really capable of like infinite stuff in life and you served yourself a plate of shit, wouldn't you laugh? You'd have to laugh. All right. Buy Bitcoin. I know that. I mean, here's the thing about Bitcoin. I don't trade it. You can buy it. Probably safe up to like $250,000. It's it's fine. It's cool. Your things are switching really quickly in the world um, for what seems like to me to be the better. It seems to be that the economic model that um, will benefit more people in the world quantitatively, um, those mechanisms are taking shape right now. I think this is going to be a really good period. A few, you know, many things that I thought like 20 years ago seem to be happening now and one thing that i'm anticipating pretty eagerly is this bridge there's got to be a bridge between creatives and abundance that is evolving not just through the internet but through a lot of different communities and just people who share like-minded you know visions of what the world is what i mean by that is money is going to get transferred to the creative class pretty quickly nfts non-fungible tokens um I'm not going to talk about them here on this podcast, mainly because I don't understand them that well, but I do know that this seems to be a key mechanism for creating value that is verified and um, really allowing people to put money in creators' hands, which I think a lot of us have the intention of doing. It feels good. That's why a lot of people do Patreon. Uh, A lot of people do Bandcamp. A lot of people just go directly to their source, like Sean and Cass at Very Ape. TV. They they have relationships with their fans, right? <laughs> Is that literally? Did I? <laughs> but they literally they have a very tight community of people that have evolved because of how they offer their work. I anticipate that continuing to be a trend. I do think NFTs on the blockchain pinning artistic mediums to um, verifiable owners is going to be something that that's continuing to like rise i'm gonna try to figure out how to do an audio nft for some of the stuff you hear on this show um I'm, i will figure it out hopefully by the end of march um because yeah i just think it's really fucking cool the way things are are working um if crypto scares you if investing scares you and you feel like you don't know what's going on let that be a reminder that that's your reaction to something it's nothing out there that's gonna hurt you you can do i've lost and won so many times trading things is nothing to do that the market doesn't hate you it doesn't react to you you are the market get in flow with it understand cycles understand what's going on you'd be all right you'll totally be cool let it be a mechanism that helps you kind of realize states of abundance is all i can say wow sometimes i astonish myself at how i can just talk with literally nothing to say for 35 minutes. I guess that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Patreon is going on. We have the Q&A coming up. Shit, I should probably do that tomorrow or something. Fuck, February snuck the fuck up on me. What a short month. I guess that's what happens when you go on vacation for a week in the middle of a short month. Uh, The Q&A will happen in the next couple of days there. We do a monthly Q&A. We do live streams. We do Twitch stuff. We're going to be doing more Clubhouse stuff. If you need an invite to Clubhouse, be cool. What are you doing? Know some cool people, you dingus. <laughs> I You have to invite via contact number and phone number. Um, so try to find someone who's <laughs> and get on. What a fucking dick move by me. But I will make sure everyone on Patreon can get a Clubhouse invite. Um, so, yeah, I think I have eight of them right now. I wish I could share them via email. That would be the best. 
Um, but we'll be doing some Clubhouse stuff regularly, maybe some afternoon shows coming up. Tune in there. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. I love you guys. It's been a really uh, interesting six months, I think, of turbulence. This is the, the rest and recuperation period. I can say that with confidence. It's a time to really reflect on your emotions, your feelings, your vitality, your health. Get those things in order. Get ready for like a nice marriage between what you subjectively feel and objectively witness. That is absolutely what's going on. Um, we're going to get more evidence of that as time goes on, I'm pretty sure. So enjoy it now. If you have questions, you have concerns, you can write to me, Noah at SyncPodcast.com. I'll make fun of you and tell you you're stupid. Just kidding. I'll probably ignore you, though. <laughs> I won't. I've been overloaded by emails. I respond usually to most of them. There is the imagining thing you can do. Um, I do appreciate all of the support. You guys are really some of the coolest people out there listening to this podcast. If you think anything in this show would help a friend or a loved one, any of these ideas, you can point them in the direction of Neville Goddard or my crazy ass if you think they're going to vibe with that. But probably go to the source. Um, the MindPod Network YouTube channel has been blowing up for some reason. There are some talks by Manly P. Hall and Neville Goddard, and I think an Alan Watts one up there. Um, check those out. That's fun. That's it. I love you. Until next week, happy imagining.